Hi everyone, Sneemaster here. With the new 3.24 cargo patch coming along, I wanted to explain how the new cargo mechanics work in a hands-on way. Sorry it's taken me so long to get this video out. The 3.24 patch is still in PTU and has a lot of bugs to be worked out, so getting video on the processes took a little while. This new patch has a new hangar mechanic, new ways to pick up and sell cargo, new cargo missions, and a new global event. So first off, in this patch, everyone has their own personal hangar that will be located at their home city. In this hangar, you can summon ships inside the hangar as well as ground vehicles and also personalize the hangar. The size of the hangar will be set to the largest ship you own. The hangar will be called by your name, so you will always know that it's your hangar. You can load up more than one ship or vehicle in the hangar, for example if you want to load a smaller vehicle into a larger ship, but always call in the smaller vehicle or ship first, and then you will have to move the smaller vehicle out of the ship elevator before you call in your larger ship, otherwise the smaller one will get replaced. You can invite others to your party, and they will be able to enter your hangar safely. Uninvited guests get trespassing charges if they try to enter your hangar, but a persistent player could still try to sneak inside. On either side of the hangars are cargo elevators. You can load or unload cargo, as well as ship equipment, hangar flare, and any personal equipment. Anything you place in the hangar should remain if you log out and log back in. You just go to the cargo screen on the side and use the UI to move objects to the elevator, and then call it up. Players in your party can also access the items from your cargo elevator after it's been brought up. You can also load personal equipment from storage using the personal cargo interface devices located everywhere in cities and stations. This also applies to items you buy from shops. You will have to pick purchases up from these devices if you want to equip new armor, weapons, food, or gear that you just bought or had stored in that location. Players can buy and sell cargo from Outpost and TDD locations, but with a slight change. You will have to load or unload the cargo manually. In the near future, you'll be able to get some automated loading on ships, but we don't have this feature in the current 3.24 PTU patch. Plus, it may take longer to load automatically than it will by hand. You can still go to an outpost and buy a set of commodity items from the commodity screen. You'll have to manually select the cargo mount as well as what size containers you want them in. So you can choose your cargo to be in the container sizes from 1 SCU to 32 SCU. To save time loading, it's best to take the largest size containers your ship can carry to make the fewest trips. You have to make sure your ship can carry those containers though. Don't buy 32 SCU containers if your ship can only carry 2 SCU boxes. Also, be careful because the trading screens no longer prevent you from buying more cargo than your ship can carry. So you can easily buy a lot of cargo and then will have to make multiple trips to carry it all, or else get some friends to carry it for you. Unfortunately, this also means that someone with a lot of money could buy out all the commodity in a location and hog it in that location. Now, you can use multiple methods to carry the cargo you just got. You can use the handheld multi-tool as well as the larger dedicated tractor beam tool. This larger tool is more powerful and it's much easier to move containers or even small vehicles with this tool. But it uses a rifle slot on your character instead of a pistol slot. You can even carry large containers with this tractor beam, even up to the 16 SU or larger. You can also load 1 SCU containers onto other ground vehicles like the Drake Mule, Tumbrel Cyclone, or Ursa Rover, but 1 SCU is not as useful in patch 3.24 with the larger containers available. Ships with tractor beams can also be used for container loading, and they can load much larger containers easily, as well as small vehicles. We have ships like the MPUV-1T, the Cutlass Black, the Crusader Spirit C-1, Drake Caterpillar, Constellation Taurus, the Argo SRV, and the Misk Hull C. The Argo Raft will have a tractor beam in the future, and will get future ships like the Zeus CL Mark II with tractor beams too. Newer ships seem to have a better tractor beam layout than older ships. The Crusader Spirit C1 has a great tractor beam turret position, and it can move from the top to the rear. Older ships like the Caterpillar have weird tractor beam placements, so it's hard for them to grab the cargo. The Cutlass Black has a tacked on feel to its tractor beam too, plus there's a bug where the Cutlass tractor beam doesn't always work. So if you finally loaded your ship with cargo and you want to sell it, you'll need to land in the hangar of the target location and then unload all the cargo in the cargo elevator. The unloading process works just like loading but in reverse and you don't have to specify where the cargo goes. Once the cargo is loaded in the elevator and sent down, you can then run over to the TDD or sales terminal to sell the cargo. You can also sell weapons, gear and other stuff the same way, as well as any salvage. There are new cargo missions now where you have to pick up a set amount of cargo and deliver it to one or more locations. You don't have to pay for the cargo, but not dropping off the cargo in the right place will fail the mission and make you lose reputation for the cargo company. 
You can advance in reputation, which will allow you to get larger cargo missions with higher pay and more cargo. Those higher level missions will often require a larger ship to carry and better tractor beam setups to transfer them. Loading and unloading the cargo works the same way as regular cargo runs, but you don't have to sell the cargo at a trading terminal. Just drop the cargo off in the cargo elevator and sending it down will complete the mission. Finally, there's also a new event going on. The new Blockade Runner group missions task the players with getting a set amount of Zeta Prolanide from some Ninetale ships that have stolen the cargo. These ships will be at various locations around a central planet. You have to find and then disable or destroy the ships. You can then grab the cargo out of them and carry them back to the main space station floating above the target planet. Just make sure you have a large enough ship for that. Zeta Prolanide has a timer after which the cargo will explode, so you have to hurry and carry it back to the target location before your ship explodes or your cargo becomes useless. After enough of these cargo missions are completed by other players, then players that have the contract will get paid quite a bit. There may be other connected missions after this one, but with how unstable the servers have been this patch, I haven't been able to determine that. But it is a fun event to take down enemy NPC ships and return their cargo quickly. So make sure you have a good sized cargo ship, tractor beams, and maybe some friends to help. Also watch out for enemy NPC combat ships that might be defending the target ships, as well as players that might be trying to help the enemy too. Plus watch for the occasional griefer that likes to shoot players. I've found a few. All of these features make cargo running more immersive, but can also take a bit more time. This does encourage players to get help from friends, and big cargo runners can hire other players too. You can make a whole economy out of it. It also means losing a large ship with cargo is even more painful from all the time it takes to load and unload that cargo. Alright, so that's it for 3.24 Cargo Mechanics. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. You can use my referral code if you decide to jump into Star Citizen, and you'll get 5,000 extra in-game credits. Here's a big thank you to my current patrons. Please check out my Patreon membership to help me make more videos. All patrons and members will have their names listed at the end of my videos and get access to my Discord channel. So feel free to sign up and let me know what you'd like to see next. Okay, catch you all next time.